uh, this is basically how it works. So every so every 60 seconds or so, uh, a question will show up uh, along with four possible answers, and those will all appear on your screen. You'll have 60 seconds to collect the to select the correct answer. But it's not just a matter of picking the right answer. Uh, the faster you answer each question, the more points you get. So you want to get the right answers as quickly as possible. And um, we do this for a round of 20 questions, and the participant with the highest score at the end uh, ends up being the winner and gets our fabulous Students on Ice Antarctica related prize. Perfect. So with that, um, I think we'll begin. Yeah. Okay, just one, two, three. There's seven players. There's seven That's of us. Perfect. Seven players. All righty. Fantastic. So your first question is, what breed of penguin species lives exclusively in Antarctica? Emperor macaroni, macaroni and chinstrap, chinstrap and Adelie, or emperor and Adelie? So those are some tough choices. I mean, uh, us in Antarctica, uh, we've definitely seen a lot of these. Uh, I don't think we saw the emperor penguins on our expedition, but they were definitely around and definitely extremely cute as well. Mm -hmm. I think my one memory that really stands out is us finally getting to Antarctica and I remember seeing chinstrap penguins for the first time but then within them there was this one macaroni penguin that was being <laughs> bullied by all the other penguins and it was both the funniest and saddest sight. <laughs> yeah yeah you definitely see the penguin politics happening and I think the craziest thing too was you have all these individual legal penguins but when you just listen to them all together like 70,000 penguins or so squawking at the same time. It's just this overwhelming sound that's really beautiful and really kind of disharmonious at the same time. It's pretty wild. Uh, perfect. So it looks like, yeah, so the right answer was Emperor and Adelie. And fun fact, there's actually over, there's, there are 18 species um, in, uh, 18 species of penguins in Antarctica. Um, most of these flightless marine birds can be found on the islands in sub-Antarctica between the latitudes of 45 degrees and 60 degrees south. Um, however, only two um, species live exclusively in Antarctica. Okay. okay, so we've got Mike and Rackley at the top of the leaderboards. We'll see how long that goes on because we're now ready for question two. What is the world's southernmost mammal? And let's see, we've got the leopard seal, the Weddell seal, the Mickey whale, or the orca. Two seals, two whale-esque creatures. Which one's it gonna be? Have you seen any of these, Robert? <laughs> oh, for sure, I think uh, both of us have seen leopard seals, Weddell seals, Mickey whales, and apparently there was an orca. Uh, I happened to miss it, but one did show up during our time in the Antarctic. Oh, wow. And we've got completely split results, but it ends up being the Weddell seal. That's correct. Uh, it's great that it's a seal. I love seals. They remind me of mermaids, but instead of like mermaids, they have like dog faces. So it's extremely cute. Perfect. Okay. Uh, this looks like there's been a shift, and Alistair is in first place at the moment. Um, so we're ready for our third question. So Deception Island has what draw for tourists? Mm -hmm. um, this little penguin behind me is actually from, oh no, it's not from Deception Island, I'm sorry. But we did go swimming in Deception Island. <laughs> Yeah, we did, and uh, had some extremely cold water. Uh, definitely, definitely a very cool experience. No, Tara, that was not a clue. <laughs> uh, cool thing about Deception Island is that uh, what there is over there that's not listed over here is a old abandoned whaling station, which is a nice reminder of uh, all natural resource exploitation in Antarctica and the need for sustainability. And look at that geothermally heated okay. waters is correct, which is why we would go swimming there. Which is why we went swimming there. 
<laughs> Our friends. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, okay, one little story about Deception Island quickly. We went okay. swimming there on January 1st of 2015, and that was the best year. Yeah. But uh, moving on to our next question, in 1994, what was banned from Antarctica? We have cell phones, smoking, sled dogs, or all of the above. Yeah, that, that was quite a crazy way to ring in the new year. Hey, Jasmine. It was. I think there's a video out there somewhere. <laughs> I think I have a GoPro somewhere. Definitely my coldest new year uh, of all time. <laughs> and the answer is sled dogs, which is 100% correct. Um, they were replaced by more mechanized forms of travel, like, you know, sledges and skidoos and the like. The tight race. Um, on to the next question. Which G7 nation does not have a consultative party status to the Antarctic Treaty? Our options are the United States, Italy, Japan, and Canada. Uh, fun fact about the Antarctic Treaty. Uh, apparently it was last ratified, I forget when, but it comes out for renewal again in 2042, which is not too distant in the future. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so Canada signed on as a non-consultative party in 1988. Um, so they're not actually one of the main seven. Mm. Which is a problem, Canada. We've got to do better. Miss Antarctica not takes the lead. All right, question seven. Antarctica is the blank largest continent. Uh, is it the first largest continent, the third largest continent, the fifth largest continent, or the seventh largest continent? Is that one of our photos from our year, Rob? I can't tell. Fun fact, all these photos that you do see on screen are all Students on Ice photos from our archives. Uh, but yes, yeah, so the correct answer is that Antarctica is the fifth largest continent. Please don't ask me in what order they all go, because I, I, I won't know that. Yeah, same here. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so our next question is, what is the largest whale in Antarctica? We have three options this time, so better chances. Um, the orca, the blue whale, or the narwhal? An equally uh, prevalent but maybe less important question is, what is the coolest whale in Antarctica? <laughs> uh, I think my answer for that is the Mickey Well. I think I'll have to agree with you on that one. And uh, hey, look at that. We have the blue whale uh, being the largest whale in Antarctica, which I believe the blue whale is also the largest whale in the world. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. But uh, anyways, uh, thanks for the confirmation, Mike. The blue whale is the largest whale in the world. Fun fact about me, I work in oceans, uh, and I should know that off by heart. <laughs> um, on to the our next question. Uh, so not only, oh wait, is this you, Rob? Sorry. This one could be, uh, not only is Antarctica the coldest continent in the world, but it is also the, the driest, the windiest, the highest, or all of the above. Six answers. And the correct answer is all of the above. In fact, Antarctica is the world's largest desert, contrary to a lot of popular opinion. I remember that writing in my journal when I was in Antarctica, when I found out, because I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah, it's kind of mind blowing. Uh, on to our next question. 
So true or false, the total number of parties in the Antarctic Treaty is now 54. Two options here, yep, great odds. And that's correct, we have six true and two false. And yes, the number of parties in the treaty is now 54. And uh, even though it's 54 now, it started out with just 12 countries originally. We had Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Chile, France, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, Russia, South Africa, the United Kingdom, and the United States. All right, so on to our next question. Uh, Antarctica's highest peak, the Vincent Massif, is named after an English explorer, the first person to summit its peak, a US congressman, or a poet. In the meantime, enjoy this beautiful, cute picture of baby chicks. Sorry, <laughs> you were saying Josephine. I was gonna ask you if you know the species of penguin on the screen. Are those gentis? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah, looks like only one person got uh, that question right. So yeah, it was a US congressman. Um, so our next question, and now we're halfway through our trivia questions. Uh, what percentage of the world's fresh water is in Antarctica? 90%? 65%, 85, or 74%? The answer is here. Clearly, regardless of what answer you pick, it's a lot of fresh water. Mm. I've, there was an article that I came across, or I was reminded of recently at least, that I believe it was the UAE that uh, tried to send a ship down to Antarctica and take some ice flows for fresh water. <laughs> I don't know if they were successful. <laughs> but yes, oh. the correct answer is that 90% of the world's uh, fresh water is found in Antarctica. That's crazy. What the fork? I agree. That's a lot of water. <laughs> All right. I guess on to our next question. In what year did the Antarctic Treaty go into effect? We've got 1959. 1961, 1960, or 1962. So question for Jasmine, do you know what penguins those are? I don't think I can name them. I don't think those are penguins. That was gonna oh. ask you what birds they were, but I wouldn't be able to confirm what bird species. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the correct answer is, uh, 1961 is when the Antarctic Treaty went into effect. Ooh. Yeah. In fact, if we still have some time, uh, even though it went into effect in 1961, it was actually signed on uh, in 1959. So there was a good two years of delay before the protections finally got into place. You have Alistair leading by a lot. And to my fellow alumni that I went with, you guys need to step it up. Perfect, next. Uh, question 13, uh, what percentage of Antarctica is covered in ice? 62%, 79%, 98% or 100%? That is a beautiful shot, which I'm pretty confident is from our year. Yeah, that is gorgeous. I think that was a Danko ice cap or something like that. Perfect. Um, so yeah, the correct answer is 98%. And fun fact, uh, Antarctica's dry valley regions um, are 1,500 square miles of bare ground where winds blast away snow and keep precipitation out, uh, which prevents ice from building. It is part of only 2% of, uh, of the continent, along with mountain peaks and eastern coastlines um, that are not covered in ice. Yeah, another fun fact, 
Uh, well, so little of Antarctica is not covered in ice, and the parts that are covered in ice, the ice goes pretty deep. Uh, the maximum depth of the Antarctic ice cap, which occurs somewhere around the geographic South Pole, is very thick. It's something like 4,300 meters or something like that deep. So you've got to go a whole 4.3 kilometers into the ice to finally hit ground in Antarctica, which is pretty crazy. All right, Alistair's Alistair's still with the lead. Still in the lead. All right, Mike, you're close. Right, on to the next question. It's a nice true or false one. True or false, there are active volcanoes in Antarctica. We definitely didn't see any volcanoes, to my knowledge. Right, Jasmine? No. Or did we? Um... Yes, so the correct answer is true. There are still active volcanoes in Antarctica. Um, Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, but on Deception Island where we visited, uh, there's an active volcano there, which is why the water was warmer around. That is 100% correct. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we did see volcanoes. Dreams in a way. Uh, next question. Oh, Mike, you're slipping. <laughs> um, so our next question is, uh, the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was in 2018 in Antarctica. What was it? It's on Fahrenheit, so none of this makes sense to me. <laughs> but your four options are minus 112.8 Fahrenheit, minus 128.6 Fahrenheit, minus 136.4 Fahrenheit, and minus 144 Fahrenheit. The important fact of the matter is they're all pretty cold temperatures. It was pretty cold. I think Antarctica is definitely the coldest that I've been. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, I think that's a picture of uh, the Mickey Whale from our expedition, Jasmine. <gasps> is it? Oh. I think that was the coldest day that I had. Um, I forgot to wear socks. Well, no, I think we were still getting dressed, which is when Jeff came on the intercom and told us that there was a Mickey Whale outside. And I just like booked it out of my room without putting on any shoes except my slippers. And I stayed out there for the whole time because it was worth it. Yeah, when nature calls, uh, you've got to go see what's out there. But the correct temperature was minus 144 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, confirming what we were saying earlier, Antarctica is pretty cold. <laughs> All right. So, uh, on to our next question. Uh, how many expeditions has Students on Ice led to Antarctica? Is it 14 expeditions, 15 expeditions, 17 expeditions, or 20 expeditions? I'm assuming that, or I guess this question could also be, how many expeditions has Jeff led to Antarctica? I don't think I'd, I'm not sure if I know anybody else who's been to Antarctica that many times. Yeah, he's definitely had his fair share of time down there. Mm -hmm. And fun fact, the answer is 15 expeditions, uh, all of which I believe took place uh, before our expedition directly. Yeah, so I think we were the, the last ones. Wow. Thank goodness we got on. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, so on to question 17. The first female scientist to conduct research in Antarctica was from which country? Norway, Argentina, the United States, or Russia? That actually is, oh goodness. What is her name? I believe she was on C3. I forget, but she's also a science fair person from my science fair days. <laughs> Oh, well, 
it's a small world. Uh, this was definitely a tricky question. I definitely didn't know the answer to this. I'd have to look it up the first time I saw it. Two, one. And the correct answer is Russia. Mm -hmm. Russia was the first country to have a female scientist in Antarctica. And her name actually was Maria Klonova. So we still have Alistair rocking it way on top of the scoreboard. And we're on to our next question. Uh, so there are roughly 70 research stations in Antarctica. The question is, which of the following countries does not have its own research station? Is it New Zealand, Brazil, Canada, or Belarus? Hey, Jasmine, I think that picture is the place where you got your penguin from. It's sitting right on your shoulder. Port Lockroy. <laughs> Yeah, the correct, correct answer, again, is Canada. We're just behind in a lot of things, apparently. We need to do better, Canada. Next question. Antarctica's Wilkes Land is named after the person who First circumnavigated the content, continent, first stepped foot on the mainland, first saw the South Pole from the air, or confirmed that Antarctica is a continent. Oh, okay. and the correct answer is confirmed that Antarctica is a continent. Uh, I remember knowing about uh, this, I think his name was what, John Wilkes or something like that. He did this sometime in the 1800s when South Pole exploration was important, probably searching for seals or something like that, or whales, because that was a big deal in Europe at that time. And because Mike, that did go quickly. <laughs> yeah, we'll make, we'll make sure if the next one's like that too, we'll, we'll try to adjust the settings to give you all more time to think about this. All right, next question. So the wandering al albatross has one of the largest wingspans of any bird on the planet. Its wingspan can reach up to two meters, 2.5 meters, 3.5 meters, or four meters. Either way, the consensus is you do not want one of these flying at you. <laughs> Yes, the correct answer is 3.5 meters. Um, I believe that there was a talk by Santia, Santiago just last night, uh, which everyone can access the recording to, um, where he talked about birds as well. And that definitely was a highlight of my expedition to Antarctica. Um, yeah. Alrighty. So, um, so we're almost at the end. Um, so question 21, the largest creature that lives on land in Antarctica is a emperor penguin, wandering albatross, Adelie penguin, or a wingless fly. Perfect. So yes, the correct answer is a wingless fly. Robert, do you know what a wingless fly is? I have no idea. I, I can imagine it just looking like a really, really small insect without, uh, without anything else uh, on it. But we do know that this particular wingless fly is called a Belgica Antarctica, or the Antarctic midge. And uh, it only grows up to like six millimeters long. And it is the largest purely terrestrial native animal uh, native to the Antarctic continent, as well as the only insect on Antarctica. 
And not only is the only insect on Antarctica, that also means that it's the only insect that can survive uh, year-round in Antarctica. So even though it's small, it's got to be pretty hardy to survive those winters. What a flex. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, so, so on to the last question, Rob. No question. Drum roll, please. The following landmark in Antarctica is named for an SOI alum. Is it the Roots Range, the Fletcher Bluff, the Walsh Spur, or all of the above? Lots of cool SOI alum. Mm -hmm. The correct answer is all of the above. We have uh, both Fred Roots, a uh, notable Canadian polar explorer in the Arctic and Antarctic, with the mountain range after him, David Fletcher, uh, commander of the British uh, Antarctic Naval Station in sometime in the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, he's got a bluff named after him. The Walsh Spur, I don't exactly know what Don Walsh did, but uh, it's definitely cool. And those are all SOI alumni. Not to mention the Kerner Ice Cap in Antarctica, which isn't officially named yet, but uh, I think we're working on it. Amazing. Oh, yeah. So, perfect. So, thank you everyone for joining us, and a big congratulations to Alistair. Um, to Tara and to Mike for being our top three. Um, so if uh, Alistair, you could private message Rachel or Ashley uh, with your email, uh, we'll follow up with you and coordinate how to get your prize to you. Yeah, congrats everyone for participating. And if you're hungry for some more Antarctic trivia knowledge and want to get ready for uh, round two of trivia, whatever that may be, uh, you can learn a whole bunch more about the continent at the bridge on soibridge.com. Uh, one particularly relevant talk you might want to listen to is from Patagonian ornithologist Santiago Umberti, uh, who Jasmine was talking about earlier and was on our expedition. Uh, he's a research scientist and consultant and a founder of the Association for Early Polar Career Researchers. Uh, that's all up there, which is great. Uh, we can also get up there and hear Jeff Green, uh, as we all know, is SOI's founder and CEO, talk about the importance of getting Canada on as a consultative party of the Antarctic Treaty and uh, remedying some of the little mistakes we've made in the past over here. So all that's great content, and uh, make sure to check out the bridge for it. Uh, the next issue will be focused on uh, uh, July, or the next issue of the newsletter for SOI will be on, issued on July 27th and really focused on wellness. So it's gonna include some inspiring presentations, resources, meditation guide, and a whole lot more. Amazing. And then if you're not already, which I'm assuming that everyone here is, um, please follow Students on Ice uh, for regular updates and to keep up to date as to what's happening um, this year in the Students on Ice office. So just at Students on Ice on all the social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, um, I'm a big fan of Instagram. It always has some exciting information and photos and throwbacks in the year. So very nostalgic. Yeah. Thank you all so much for coming.